All right, you guys, got another special treat for those tomato lovers out there. We have quite a few varieties that we're gonna try today. Uh, one that really has impressed me in the past is that white tomasol. We have uh, Torburns or Thorburns terracotta. We have the uh, Persuasion from Brad Gates. We have the Cosmic Eclipse from Brad Gates. Look how beautiful those are. It's kind of insane. We even have the Black Beauty, although it's not very black because uh, well, there's a lot of shading going on with my plants. We have a Tex wine here. This is Michael Pollan. We have a Captain Lucky. We have the Pink Brandy wine, my absolute favorite. This here is the, well, this is Goose Creek. This is Purple Cherokee, Cher Cherokee Purple. We have African Queen. And then this last one here is the Black Pineapple or otherwise known as Ananas Noir. So we got a pretty good selection here. I wanna show you guys the plants really quickly before we just do our tasting. We have about 50 varieties of tomatoes growing in a very dense area. And that's why there isn't a ton of light that's reaching these plants because there's a lot of internal shading, especially if the clusters form a bit lower down on the plants. And it seems like a lot of these special or very interesting tomatoes don't necessarily show their true colors because they're so shaded. Now, that's on the outside. The inside can be quite similar to what I'm looking for, or at least what is expected from the variety. But uh, for the most part, the skin and the outside is a bit strange on some of them. So please do understand that that's what's going on. For the most part, we're at the end of August here and the vines are for the most part still looking pretty healthy. Some have died off, some got disease. They kind of self thinned themselves like this variety here just uh, didn't make it. But they're growing well and they're gonna continue to produce as the season goes on. And I should probably have tomatoes when grown vertically like this and hopefully kept disease free. Uh, very soon I'm gonna make some cuts. I'm gonna pull out some tomato plants really increase the airflow, the light that these plants are receiving, the fruits are receiving, because there's just some varieties I really just don't like. I see absolutely no use for them. Um, and we're also, by the way, not just those 50 plants over there, those 50 varieties, a lot of them are for sauce. And we've already made sauce for a number of these, these paste tomatoes, and very soon I'll have videos coming out on these. This is the San Marzano here that everybody seems to think is the best paste tomato. We have orange banana. We have all kinds of different paste tomatoes that I've already made big batches of sauce out of. So we'll get to try those and really compare and see if indeed San Marzano or maybe another tomato makes the best sauce. So let's do this particular tasting first before we get into all that sauce stuff. Um, I am going to show you guys how I'm making the sauce. You can't see my head. I'm going to raise you guys up a little bit. Got to be able to see my head. I don't think there's anything more important in these videos than seeing my head. Um, so we're going to show you guys how, to, how I'm making the sauce. And also, we'll show you guys just the overall general tasting that we're going to do on these particular paste varieties. I think I may go visit a friend of mine who makes the most amazing pizza. And we're gonna see what he thinks, just from a pizza standpoint, but also from just general, you know, you're making sauce, how good is the sauce? Uh, so we'll, I think we're gonna get his uh, opinion. And even if I have to wait until, you know, it's quite a while before I see him, I am gonna keep the, the sauce in the fridge until we're ready, you know? So uh, I may even freeze some of it. You know, what's, what's the difference? So anyway, all right, let's start off with some of the better ones because um, I think that'll establish a nice little baseline. My absolute favorite, as I said here on this table, is the pink brandywine. I really like this Goose Creek. This is a new one to me and it's really impressed me. I also like the purple Cherokee and things like black crim and things like that. But they're, to me, they're second to this pink brandywine. The bicolors, I haven't really been too big of a fan of so far. You know, this Persuasion, although it's not a bicolor, but 
the really colorful ones seem to look nice, but they're not really that tasty. And um, I don't know why that is. They're, in a sense, maybe it's because they're kind of so colorful and so beautiful that you have maybe higher expectations. And then when you bite into it, you realize it just doesn't live up to it. Probably my favorite though, and a tomato I probably will continue to grow for the foreseeable future is this one here. It's called the white tomasol. I've been really, really impressed with this. I even made sauce out of it. It produces a white sauce. So we're gonna see if, uh, you know, this thing makes a pretty decent sauce, if it tastes as good as I think it might. Um, all right, let's start off with Michael Pollan. Actually, this is just right in front of me and I have not been that impressed with it. It's supposed to store for a very long time. It's, I think, related to the green zebra, but very different. Very, very thick, tough walls. Um, I wonder if it would be a decent um, candidate for sauce, and I might try it if I get enough of these. I may make a batch. Well, it is quite good, but there's a tomato I grow this year, it's called Lucky Tiger, that is very similar in flavor, I think, and I, I prefer it. The skin's not as thick and not as tough, the walls aren't as thick. Um, it's just a better all over, a better all, overall a better eating experience um, than this particular tomato. But it has its uses, right? It's supposed to store for a long time or hang on the vine for a long time. I may be able to eat this well into uh, you know, the fall, so that would be interesting to see if that's possible. So that's the um, Michael Pollan. I guess we'll do a 180 here. Let's go to the uh, Purple Cherokee, right? Why not? Definitely a stunner. And, um, you know, really regarded by so many people to be one of the best tasting tomatoes. And for me, it was always second to the Pink Brainy one. So um, this year, I'm not even sure if I would say it's second, oddly enough. Oh, that's very good. It's definitely a very good tomato. I mean, we all knew that, right? But we're establishing a baseline here for, this is the standard, pink brandy wine is the standard. How do the rest of these compare? Let's try the Cosmic Eclipse. It's so beautiful. I mean, this tomato is really striking. They're about salad sized tomatoes. A little on the smaller side. I need a better knife than this for tomatoes, but it is what it is. That's a very interesting flavor. It reminds me a lot of the uh, reminds me a lot of the Black Beauty, which is right here, because they have this. It has the a fennel taste to it, a licorice, anise flavor to it. Here's the inside. As I said, it's this is the right tomato, and I've grown it in the past. It tastes exactly as I remember it, but the skin is not black because it just doesn't get enough sun. Wow. You know, it reminds me right now of a um, Pacelle. Anyone know what a Pacelle is? It's like a, a flowery uh, cookie that Italian people make and they add uh, anise seeds to the, uh, to the cookie. And usually you get them around Christmas time. It's kind of like a batter that they make. It's like a batter and you put them into a um, almost like a waffle maker, and it forms these really nice cookies. That's what the, that anise flavor really reminds me of in that Black Beauty. And I'm kind of getting a little bit of that in this Cosmic Eclipse, but it's not as strong. This is more subtle. It's not as floral in that way.
but it still has some of that, oddly enough. But it's a little different. It's something, something different about it. It's like a different herb. Um, so it's floral. It's interesting. It's good. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's actually a very good tomato. Same thing with the Black Beauty. But uh, I don't know. It's just so strange that like it's almost like at a left field or something, and you're just not used to it. You know, you're just not, it's so weird that you're not used to it and you don't really know what to do with it. You know what I mean? That's kind of how my taste buds feel right now with a lot of these bicolor tomatoes. Uh, let's continue on with the bicolors now that we're kind of on this train. This is uh, Captain Lucky, I believe. I'm almost 100% sure. I mixed up the Captain Lucky and the Ananas Noir. They look so darn similar that... I really don't know which one's which. Let's see the inside because we'll be able to know, I guess, which one's which. Oh, that's so beautiful. Holy crap. I mean, that's what these bicolors do, man. They got all these weird colors in there and because they have all these colors, they taste different. Every color corresponds to a particular flavor. It's just wonderful to see. I mean, there really is, people are doing some amazing work, these breeders, when they're creating these bicolor tomatoes. I just want one that's a bit more normal, you know what I mean? I don't know how to describe that exactly, but. So here's the Ananas Noir, and they just look, they look the same, and if someone told me, basically, that black pineapple was the same, or very similar to Captain Lucky, I'd believe it, because they just, I don't see a ton of difference between the two. I mean, the inside is more green on this, uh, this Captain Lucky. Let's try them both. It's very good. Very good. It's a great tomato. It's kind of right up there with this, this purple Cherokee. But it's fruitier. I think it's slightly better. Honestly, I don't taste much difference. So I grew Ananas Noir or Black Pineapple years ago, but the seed, whatever it was, the plant didn't do well. I didn't have great transplants going in and it didn't, it didn't do well and I never got to taste it. Or if I did taste it, it really wasn't a great representation of what the fruit should have been. So this is a good representation. I think it's good. I think it's really good. It's better than Captain Lucky. It's quite a treat. Very, very good. I'm very impressed. Um, I think I prefer, though, this Black Beauty over it. Yeah, they're just so different. Like I said, the Black Beauty's like out of left field, you know? All right, let's try this Tex wine. This is a tomato that came highly recommended from a grower on YouTube that I thought, wow, I guess I have to try it. It doesn't really look like much, I'll tell you that. And I wonder if maybe the seed is just uh, not great or maybe this particular plant isn't great or maybe it's just because it's shaded as the Black Beauty is. But the inside looks great. That inside looks really respectable. The inside reminds me of a Goose Creek, which we have over here as well. Yeah. 
It's an average tomato, not very good. The skin's very thick, tough. The walls, the, the pulp, the texture's off. Um, I don't even know if that's really what that's supposed to be. Maybe it's something else and I'm not aware, you know? Um, yeah, I'm gonna reserve judgment, so maybe that is text wine, maybe it's not. I have to do my research, more, more research on it. This here is the um, African Queen. I have two of them. This so far has not been very impressive at all. Again, the same grower actually recommended this tomato as the text wine, and I have not been impressed by it. So it's all about, this whole trial has been largely about who can I trust, you know, in the world of tomatoes. Um, there's very few fig growers. I grow a lot of figs for anyone that doesn't know. There's very few fig growers where I can trust their palate. Big Bill, my buddy Big Bill in Lancaster is definitely one of them. My friend Raphael. Um, I mean, that's just a short list right there, but in terms of tomatoes, I have nobody I can trust. I don't really know people in the tomato community. I don't know these very serious people who are breeding them and, you know, come up with these beautiful, amazing tomatoes, but are they tasty, right? That's my, that's my goal. That's my, that's where my head's at. So we're gonna see if, you know, like if Brad Gates or somebody says it's supposed to be tasty, and it's not, then I, then there's an issue, right? I mean, this African queen tomato is not horrible, but it's not great. Very thick skin, again, just not pleasurable to eat. The pulp's good, the pulp's juicy and, and uh, melts in your mouth, but the skin's not, and the flavor is just, just about average. You know, it depends also, guys. It's like, you know, you can trust somebody like Brad Gates because I've eaten the Black Beauty here. I've eaten a couple of his tomatoes, and I really like them, you know? But he lives, he grows in California. I'm in, I'm in Pennsylvania. There's a difference, huge difference in the climate. I mean, it just rained yesterday a lot. So... The flavor of these tomatoes is vastly different. The amount of time that the, you know, the plants can hang on the vine and ripen, you know, you got to think about just the seeds themselves, uh, the source of my seeds, the individual seed in the seed packet. I mean, it goes a long way changing these plants, changing the fruits. It's just, it's, it's huge. All right, let's try this Thorburn's terracotta. This is one that. I found out about this one from that, that woman on YouTube who grows all the tomatoes. She's a homesteader. What the heck's her name? Everybody loves her. Um, short hair. She grows a ton of tomatoes. Anyway. Wow. This one was a stunner. At least the photos I saw of it. The skin doesn't look that great as again, it's just not in the ton of light, but the inside's very interesting. It's like an orange tomato on the outside, but the inside's green and red. The seeds, uh, the gel and the seeds are green. It's striking, very, very striking. Let's try this. Yeah, it's just kind of bland. It's, it's pretty earthy. It's got some earthy flavor in there. A little bit of floralness. But yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just my climate. I mean, how many people are, you know, really growing tomatoes and breeding them in these northern climates and humid climates like my own? You know, it just dramatically changes a tomato. Um, you know, and who's to say that, yeah, my favorite's pink brandy wine in Philadelphia, but if I move to California, maybe one of these other ones would be my favorite, you know? Um, so I'm not really a big fan of this. I don't, I don't even know where I'd rank it. Um, it's not bad, you know what I mean? It's just not great. It's not what I would, 
it's not one of these amazing tomatoes. Like, I'm saving the best for last. This is um, White Tomasol, and somebody on YouTube who does tomato review videos said in the video that uh, this was his favorite tomato one year. He couldn't believe how good it was, and then ever since, he didn't save seeds from that tomato, wished that he did, and he wishes that he could get this that same experience once again from that tomato. And ever since, they haven't been that good. But he said this was, I think he said it was probably the best tomato he ever had. And this is a guy who's obsessed with tomatoes. And I've eaten them this year, it's extremely impressive, this tomato. They're all very good. Let's try this one. Yeah. I mean, it's not mind-blowingly good, but it's up there. It's got some nice fruitiness to it. It even is a little bit chalky, like the pink brandy wine gets. It's a good tomato. This year I've really become a big fan of the white tomatoes. They have the most amazing fruity flavor that uh, you just don't find. They're kind of like ground cherries without the funk, without the cheese in them. So far though, out of this whole trial, I think my favorite is this uh, bicolor, this black pineapple. Yeah, that's really good and Cherokee purple is up there, but kind of watered down flavor. The uh, black pineapple is just superior. Um, all right, we have two more to try. The Goose Creek, which has been impressive. I think it's a really good tomato to grow. It produces a lot. It's quite good. Above average flavor. Kind of reminds me of the white tomasol in a way. But the amazing tomato flavor in this is just, it's, it's insane. There's so much tomato flavor in here. And then of course I got the pink brandy wine which is, in my opinion, the king. It's the best, as I've said. Even put some tape on it there and labeled it. It's chalky. I know that's weird, but it's kind of earthy in that sense. It's smooth, it's so melt in your mouth good. There's no skin, it feels like. Uh, perfect for sandwiches, perfect uh, for fresh eating. It's good uh, in terms of its sweetness. It's got a nice balance to it, though, of acidity and sweetness. I don't know. It's just got everything you want. And every single fruit I harvest off of that sudden strain of pink brandy wine, it's just so, so good. And you know what? They're not even that unproductive. Um, they do produce a pretty good amount of fruits. If you get them off on the right start, you get them quite healthy. I even find that if you, uh, you know, the first couple of fruits that it wants to put out, First, first couple of flowers, remove those flowers, let it continue to grow, get a bit stronger, and then uh, start putting out those fruits. And you'll have quite a bit. Although not as much as you would have the hybrid, uh, you know, that really was bred for that purpose. But anyway, guys, I'm tomatoed out right now. I've had more, too many tomatoes in the last, how, how long has it been? 24 minutes. So I'm done. <laughs> Um, I got some sushi to eat for dinner. So we will see you guys soon. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, check out the other videos we've done now on the tomatoes. All the reviews we've done. We've grown tomatoes. I'm, I think I'm going to make a playlist, put together all the tomatoes in, in one, one playlist for you guys to watch. And then coming up soon, as I said, is the video on the paste. So hopefully that's not too far away, but whenever I can get down to see my buddy dom in jersey that's what we're gonna do so uh we'll see you for that thanks for watching guys we'll see you soon all right take care